In this lesson, we're going to look at the graphs of sine and cosine functions and the periodic nature of them. And so before, before we even get into the lesson, I'd like you to pause the video and just write down any, anything in nature or in the real world that is cyclical, things that um, have some repetitive behavior. Um, in mathematics, a periodic function is a function that repeats itself in regular intervals or periods. And um, so think of, think of one or two. So the most common ideas that people come up with are um, the tides. Um, every 12 hours you have a high tide and a low tide. The weather, when, you, when we think of our temperatures, um, if you think of like the average high temperature of a given day, obviously as you get into winter those temperatures drop and then as you head towards summer those temperatures rise again and then they continue to do that, um, you know, they cycle throughout the year or any year you'd have one cycle. Um, hours of daylight is another one. Um, in December you have your shortest day of the year and then in June you have the longest day of the year. And so the first thing I want to do is to, to connect the graph of the sine function to the unit circle. And all those little, those y coordinates on the unit circle, those are all your sine values. And so in this activity, if you have a graphing calculator, it would be great if you could follow along. If you don't have a graphing calculator, you can just watch uh, the demonstration. And let's open up the calculator. In order to graph the unit circle simultaneously with the graph of a sine function, we're going to use something called parametric mode. And without getting into too much detail about parametric equations, um, with a parametric equation, your x-coordinate is in terms of some function and your y-coordinate is in terms of some different function. And so, first thing we do, we're going to go into mode, and you want to be in radians, so highlight radians. You want to be, instead of function, you want to be in PAR, that's parametric mode. The other thing that we want to do is we want to graph two separate equations at the same time. So you want to come down and make sure you've highlighted simultaneous. And the keystrokes in, uh, that will help you do that are on the actual guided notes. I now want to go into the window. And I've played around with this, so the reason why I chose these values is just because I know this is going to give you a good uh, view of both functions. So your t min, and t is now the angle in radians, and cosine is a function of t, and sine is also a function of t. We want our t min to be 0, our t max to be 2 pi, so if you get 2 pi, and you get the 6.28. The t step is basically how often the calculator will evaluate. So we'll start with point 0.1, and if that value um, makes the graph, you know, if it's graphed too quickly, we'll change that. My x min is going to be negative 2. My x max will be 7.4, and again, these values are also on your guided notes. The scale will be pi over 2, so second, that caret key under the clear, divided by 2. My y min, I want to be negative 3.1. My y max will be 3.1. The scale on the y axis will be 1. And now we're going to go in and hit y equals. And you'll notice now this looks a little bit different than um, what it looked like before. You don't have y1, y2. What we have is we have x1t, y1t. And so we're graphing two different, um, basically the x-coordinate is in terms of some function and the y-coordinate is in terms of some function. And so we know at the x-coordinate on our unit circle is a function of its, its cosine. So it be cosine t. And the y-coordinate is going to be sine t. So that's going to be one of our graphs. It's going to graph a circle. The next one is we want to graph sine in terms of t. So the x-coordinate will be your angle. So along the x-axis you'll have an angle and then the y-coordinate is going to be the sine of that angle. Okay. So I'm going to hit graph and the first time through I'm just going to let it run its course. So it might, we're going to look at this more than one time. So what's seeing, you can see the unit circle on the left and at the same time we get this, this curve 
um, where along the x-axis you're looking at your uh, your angle and the y values are the sine of that angle. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to change my t-step to a smaller number so this will will graph a little bit slower. So I went in and I changed the t-step to 0.005 uh, which makes this graph very very slowly so we can kind of talk about it a little bit better. Um, so I'm going to hit graph I'm going to have to turn the graph off. I'm going to turn one of them off. If you Once you graph it, if, if you want to graph it again and see the motion, you have to turn one of the graphs off, then turn it back on again, and it will start the graph over. So two things are happening here. It's not as obvious, but right here we're graphing the unit circle. It's going to come around, okay, and to the right here is what the, the graph that's moving to the right. That is the actual sign, so it's a y-coordinate. So think about the the SIGN, the sine of the sine function in the first two quadrants. The y coordinate in the first two quadrants is positive. Now when you hit pi or 180, the sine of that is zero. So look over here, you're at, you're at zero. Now we're in the we're in the third quadrant and we know that the the sine of an angle is negative in the third quadrant, so you should be below the x-axis over here the sine of 3 pi over 2 is negative 1. Here's 3 pi over 2 and the y value is negative 1. Now our y values are approaching 0 again. As we as the angle approaches 2 pi we are back on the um, on the x-axis again. So let me summarize that again. Over here this is the unit circle and this graph right here is just the graph of the angle versus the sine of the angle. So this would be, the, think of the x coordinate here. The x values are 0. This last x value that we have here is 2 pi. So we're graphing one cycle of sine. Right here is pi. Halfway between 0 and pi is pi over 2. And halfway between pi and 2 pi is 3 pi over 2. Now we will summarize this later. Uh, we'll actually physically graph one of these by hand. Okay. Now I could change the window. Let's change the window and instead of stopping it at 2 pi for my t max, I'm going to go to 4 pi. I've changed my t max to, to 4 pi because I want to do two rotations. I've changed my x max to 4 pi because I want to extend the graph of the sine not from 0 to 2 pi but from 0 to 4 pi and I'm going to make my t step 0.1 so this will graph a little faster. I'm also going to go into y equals and I want you to arrow over to the left. Keep hitting enter until you get the line with the circle at the end of it. You can graph all sorts of different lines, a thick line, a thin line, but a line with a little circle at the end of it. And do that for both. Arrow over to the left until you get this line with the circle. You keep hitting enter, you'll get a solid line, a broken line, a thicker line, you know, until you get the line with the circle. And then we'll hit graph. So as I rotate around the unit circle, I'm in the first quadrant, I'm above sign is above the x-axis. In the second, I mean the third and fourth quadrants, the sign is below. And when I complete one rotation, I'm now going to go around again, and you can see that the sine curve is just repeating itself. So we, at one rotation, we went above the x-axis and below the x-axis and back at zero. And then another rotation, we're repeating that same shape. Let's do three rotations just so you can see this. It's a, if I want to do three rotations, now it'll be a little, it's a little more distorted here. Um, the unit circle doesn't look as round anymore because we're, we're kind of changing the scale here. But if I do three pi, I want to go down around the circle, excuse me, not three pi. I want to do six pi because that's three rotations around the circle. And I'm going to do six pi on my x-axis also. Okay. 
and we'll graph this. Again, the unit circle, again, it's not looking as much like a circle because I've distorted the window a little bit, but you can see the rotation over to the left as you go around, and one rotation over here will correspond to one cycle of the sine curve. And there's my rotation, there's one cycle. I'm rotating around a second time, going from 2 pi to 4 pi. Here, I'm going to go from 2 pi to 4 pi also. So I'm about to end, I'm hitting 2 pi on my unit circle, I'm hitting, excuse me, 4 pi, and now I'm going to do one more rotation. I'm going to go from 4 pi to 6 pi. So over here, I'm going to get one more cycle. Okay, and that is really just to relate um, the graph of a sine function to the unit circle. And we'll make some more connections um, in the next video.